Hello you beautiful people, welcome back to the channel. I trust this episode finds you well and still enjoying the hobby. So as is traditional with this channel, um, we get straight into the action, so to speak. <laughs> always makes me laugh saying that because it's probably the most least action you can probably watch but anyhow I digress so this week we are going to be dealing with the cockpit tub on the Zukimura F4 EJ Phantom so just a quick overview of the parts that we're going to be using and as you can see the detail is pretty decent Zukimura released this kit just before Tamiya released their Phantom um, so I do feel that the Zukimura kit is probably always going to be the bastard child of the Phantom kits but I must admit this kit um, has been superb and in many ways is pretty Tamiya like in the fact that it's just like shaking a bag almost you know it just literally falls together it is splendidly designed uh, it does probably lack a couple of refinements maybe from the Tamiya one but uh, yeah, I'm not disappointed. The fit is exceptional, as you'll see throughout this episode. So just sped up for viewing pleasure is just getting all the pieces we need off the sprue. Um, I'm going to not cover the building side in too great a depth because I feel we're all pretty much genned up on how this, this goes together. Um, I will sort of touch on it. Uh, we will be touching also on the excellent Quinta decals that I use for the cockpit details as well. I used these in the SU-27 build and was absolutely blown away and by them. So there's like a, a tiny mini tutorial on that through this episode. So just gluing some parts onto the rear of the tub. As you can see, I put a few bits together there, the foot pedals and some of the, cons uh, the console there. And, it is, and as you can see, it's a, such a superb fit. This didn't actually need any glue. Obviously, I use some just because, I don't know, it just seems right to and weird not to. <laughs> but as you can see, it's almost like Lego. It just goes to, together absolutely beautifully. As always, I'll be using the Tamiya Extra Thin Cement. But further on in the episode, I'll switch over to the quick drying just to see. You know, I've never used it before, see how it goes. And we'll see, see how we get on a bit later on. Uh, if you're new to the channel, welcome. Um, I hope you enjoy. If you haven't already, please hit the like and subscribe button because there will be plenty more videos on just this build alone. And there are um, plenty of videos also on my SU-27 UB build and uh, also a Boeing 757 airliner build as well. So just attaching in here the ejector seat rails. We won't be um, dealing with the ejector seats in this episode. I think I'm gonna leave them probably towards the end of the build. Um, or if I suddenly feel halfway through I fancy doing them, I will do them, but uh, I'll probably just edit them in at the end of the build. So there we go, that's the basic, very basic tub together there. So now we go on to dealing with the, uh, how do we do, cockpit uh, consoles, I suppose, with all the dials, etc. And oh, it's beautifully moulded, I have to say, but because I've got the Quinta decals, and quite honestly, I really don't have the talent, like I'm sure a lot of you do, with being able to uh, paint all the dials and make them look amazing like I've seen. There are some people out there that can do that. I don't have that in the locker. Well, not yet anyway. So what I do, and it was quite soul destroying, I've, I've got to admit, is I get a metal file into getting all the, the raised um, areas of the uh, cockpit tub where all the instruments, etc., are. I even had to resort to using my razor saw there, which did do a great job. That is an excellent tool, by the way, if you haven't got one there, about 10 UK pounds, and they are just invaluable. Then, final bit of sanding stick going in there, just to uh, remove the final uh, detail. Like I say, you sort of have to hold your nose and jump in the cold end with this and just realize that it's gonna look great when it's done. There's a bit of sort of fluff on there, as you can see, like the close-up brings to sort of how hacked way it is. So I just used a bit of the Tamiya Extra Thin and just basically uh, gave it, just put a fine layer over the top, as you can see, and that gets rid of all the dust and the loose bits and pieces. It doesn't have to be a perfect science. The better, you, you know, the, the smoother you can get it, obviously, the better these decals will adhere to the uh, plastic or the paint and the plastic. So I used here um, H307, uh, Mr. Hobby Color Gray, and Mr. Holly, Ho <laughs> Holly, Mr. Hobby Color Number One. And it was just a couple of drops in the color cup of the white, just to lighten it ever so slightly. I won't bore you too much with um, watching me spray this cockpit tub. 
because I'm pretty sure you know we all know how that's done and it's standard across the board. The colour mixture was um, thinned out using um, Mr Hobby, I forget what it's called now, Mr Hobby Leveling Thinners, that's the one because they are excellent. Talking of excellent, we go on to the Quinta Studio decals. Now, if you haven't seen these before, these are truly magnificent, okay? They don't act like normal decals, um, but that'll be touched on a bit later on. Um, but that we'll call them decals just for ease of uh, description. So as you can see here, you get extensive instructions of where these go on the panels and parts of the kit. And these Quinta decals are actually specifically for the F4 EJ, so you know what's there is meant to be there it's not just a generic kind of thing so without further ado here are said decals and as you can see they are vinyl printed so they actually have raised sections on them well I mean it's astonishing it really is oh, what a time to be alive eh these these decals are absolutely superb and as you, there you go as you can see there the detail and the realism is pretty phenomenal even up close like so so these can be ordered from most model shops or direct from Quinta themselves, and their their custody, their you know their dispatch time is exceptional. So uh, if you haven't tried them before, I thoroughly recommend it. So there's the main control console there, now being covered by my hand. Now this is what you use for gluing them to the plastic. It's PVA glue. Okay, do not, and I cannot stress this enough, use normal um, normal glues of any sort. Use PVA. Do not use um, Tamiya Extra Thin or Super Glue or anything like that. Okay, because it will melt them. Uh, what you do, you do what you do with normal decals to start with. Really, just place them in the water. You don't hold them in there though. Not for too long anyhow, I think it's like 10 seconds, then with a piece of tissue that shall be revealed shortly, you will then, um, I'm getting ahead of myself here, the tissue that will reveal itself shortly, um, you dab it on there, that takes away, oh there's the tissue, um, you dab it away, all like the excess moisture, and then it simply slides off, and then it's just literally a case of putting some glue on and attaching it as you will see shortly now. I use an old airbrush needle for a fine application of glues, and this is no exception. A couple of little dabs like that. Don't need too much, because as you, as you place it down, that will obviously flatten out across the whole surface of the decal. So with a fine set of tweezers, just a case, as you can see, of separating the vinyl decal off the backing paper. Like so, as you can see, they're super flexible. They're so forgiving. You, you, you really would struggle to trash these, apart from using the wrong glue. I cannot, again, stress that enough. We go, nice close up view, and getting that control panel popped into situ. And again, as you can see here, the, the joys of the PVA glue is it doesn't dry quickly, so you can adjust and get it set correctly. And I, I had it there and thought, oh, that's right, but then checking what was on the instructions uh, provided by Quinter, I realized they were in the wrong place, so we move them across. But the good news is, as you can see there, some of that glue is sticking out the side. It actually clear, it dries clear and pretty much disappears. So yeah, it's, it's forgiving, should we say. It's a forgiving glue. So nicely in place there, just final touches. And it really was just a case of rinse and repeat throughout the whole cockpit, which I won't bore you to tears with. Um, I think you get the idea here. It's really simple. If I can do it, trust me, you can. Um, yeah, give them a go, seriously. I think they're about 15 pounds to the UK for a direct from Quinta. And uh, yeah, brilliant service. Really, really pleased with these. There are other companies that do something similar as well, but I'll leave that for you to do your own research on. So there we go, cockpit done. Now the eagle eyed view will notice that there has been some weathering done. Now this was done using weathering oils. I've touched on that in uh, other episodes on various builds. So uh, do go and have a look through those if you're unsure, or if not, um, there are various uh, videos on YouTube that will show you how to do it. It's just basically using normal oil paints thinned with um, white spirit and then just dabbed into place. Again, it's very forgiving because it takes a long time to dry and then just wiping away and it gives you a nice sort of grimy look. Now here I did a dry brush with a silver paint, the metallic paint, just to bring out the details as you saw there on the cockpit surround. 
Um, it wasn't quite as silver as that look, it's actually black, but it just highlights all the nice details in there. Now, if you really fancy, you can go absolutely to town on this um, in the cockpit, because there are wires and pipes and tubes at the back of this uh, cockpit panel. You can see in front of you are plenty. Now, you can really go to town with that if you want to. So I don't. <laughs> Straight and simple, I don't. But as you can see there, nice snug fit. Details all shining away there in the light. Um, yeah, I'm quite happy with that, I'm not going to lie. Um, there's perfectionists out there that I'm sure can tear it to strips, but you know, I'm happy with it. I build for myself, so uh, if I'm happy, then I guess the audience is small. <laughs> so, if you draw to the latter stages now of the video, this is me. I, I've picked up some of this at a local hobby shop. It's the extra thin cement but quick drying. It's, I just want to give it a try and see how I get on with it. So far, so good. I'm not blown away with how quick it dries, but it, 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 it sticks perfectly well it welds the plastic nicely um, and, and does that does the job i suppose so i've got both halves of the uh, fuselage um, removed from the sprue or, or the sprue tree how whichever generation you want to say it and then with just a case of placing this into the side of the cockpit now what i am I'm keen to get correct here is where my fingers are pressing that has to be snug with the black um sort of shelf there because that's how it is on the real aircraft. So make sure you get that nice and snug in there. It can, it does take a little bit of, pers not persuading, but a little bit of pressure. And again, the, the glue, the cement being quick drying actually did help having said that and just plate and then pinned it in place quickly without too much effort. So as you can see, I swapped sides and glued it in this side. Just a case of placing it in the excellent mounts there. And with the uh, quick drying glue, just running it along there, allowing the capillary action to work and sticking it in situ. So while I've got a couple of minutes whilst you watch me do that, oh that's interesting to point out by the way, at the bottom of the cockpit is the nose gear bay. So again, pretty well detailed, that will get dealt with in the next episode. But just a nice touch there, it's all one piece. So again, while I've got you here, I'd just like to thank you if you've got this far, I really appreciate it. If you like what you've watched, which I do hope you do, please uh, like and subscribe if you haven't already. If you don't like, drop me a line. Suggestions are always welcome. So as you can see here, I'm just making sure that that, that shelf part there, the black, well, the, the step panel, I would say, when they're getting into the cockpit, um, just wanted to make sure that that was snug both sides. So what I've done is I've actually taped the fuselage halves together and then glued both sides of the cockpit tub. So it's actually, the fuselage is pretty much held together now via the cockpit tub. As you can see, I've got a nice snug fit on there and that's looking good with those beautiful quinter decals. So in the next episode, uh, which hopefully will be coming out fairly soon, uh, we will be dealing with gluing the halves together and going on through the instructions from there. And we'll probably hopefully be getting some wings together and bits and pieces and starting to make this uh, little beauty uh, look like an F4 EJ. She's coming together well, really highly rate the kit so far. That may change as we go along, I don't know. But if you'd like to follow me along, do hit the like and subscribe, follow along with my journey. I'm Like I say, I'm no professional, but I enjoy what I do. And if you learn something off me, absolutely awesome. And even if it's learning not what to do. Anyway, thank you ever so much once again for joining me. Until next time, stay safe and look after yourselves. Have fun, people. Enjoy your modelling.